Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Well, friends, it's very rare that I make any videos or cover really any topics related to pop culture these days. Every now and then when it fits, I'll make a video. And in this case, it certainly fits, and it's definitely right up my alley, and it's something that I want to cover, because it's the perfect example of left-wing cope and the left-wing Twitter clout-chasing grift. Today, friends, we're talking about She-Hulk. Not sure if you guys are aware of it, but it's Marvel's new TV series, the female version of Hulk, Hulk's cousin, who gets some Hulk juice in her bloodstream and turns into She-Hulk, attorney at law. Not only is she a Hulk, but she's a strong, empowered, single whammon with a serious career in law. And well, of course, you guys know I'm a bit of a masochist in a certain way. I spend a whole lot of time watching CNN and MSNBC and a bunch of woke crap, basically so you don't have to. And the moment She-Hulk, attorney at law came out, I couldn't resist exist. Did I want to watch it? Uh, not really. I knew it was going to be total garbage, but I just had to, and I was not surprised. It's one of the worst TV series, or at least one of the worst pilot episodes, for any TV series I've watched in a very long time. And most people agree. I mean, it's contrived, it's forced feminism, the story writing is completely terrible, the ending of the show is the cringiest thing I've ever seen. It's getting significantly low reviews, and I personally think the reviews are higher than they should be. And here's where the leftist coping comes into play featuring Mark Ruffalo. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on and let's just have a conversation about the continued woke infestation of the entertainment industry. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so She-Hulk attorney at law is getting garbage reviews with a 5 out of 10 on IMDb, as you guys can see right over here. And while I would say that is way too high for this utterly terrible show. Also, there's some very fishy stuff going on. Usually, the user reviews on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes tend to match at least relatively closely. Sometimes there's a little bit of a disparity between the two, but for the most part, they're usually quite similar on the user review side. But if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, for some reason, there's a 20% jump on the audience score. And then, of course, the tomato critic score, I mean, bought and paid for shills, it's not even worth acknowledging or talking about. But the point is, the show is not really a smashing success. It's pretty trash. And the IMDb score shows that the Rotten Tomato one is most likely inflated. 5 out of 10. And like I said, that's way too high. The show is garbage. It's undeniable. When you get 5 out of 10, it means you're most likely headed towards cancellation. The only thing holding this pile of trash up is the MCU tag or the Marvel tag. And here's where the leftist copium comes into play. Mark Ruffalo, famous Marvel actor, the actor who plays the Hulk, and famous Bernie Sanders supporter, you know, just another 50 plus million dollars net worth socialist just cannot handle the fact that She-Hulk, a show that he's involved with, is getting trashed on the audience score. And of course, like every other leftist bozo on the Twitter platform, he reduces the whole thing to ma misogyny and ma racism and pushes the left-wing grift for Twitter and Hollywood clout points. Take a look at what he wrote here. The rise in bad faith IMDb reviews, particularly for projects led by women and or BIPOC, threatens to render the site's scores meaningless if the problem is not addressed. Getting low scores on IMDb now if you're a whammon or if the show is whammon centric or if the main character or main characters are part of BIPOC means that it must be a hate crusade and not that the show is terrible. Of course, here we go again. Man, you are coping. These leftoids just cannot accept basic reality. I mean, it's really simple. It's not exactly rocket science. The reason the show is getting bad reviews is because the show is complete and utter crap. Probably the most annoying part of the show is just how contrived it is. It's not an organic, strong female character. It's a contrived feminist plot to promote female empowerment, and it's clear, it's obvious. It doesn't feel natural at all. It feels forced, shoved down your throat, and slapped in your face. For instance, stuff like this. Here's the thing, Bruce. I'm great at controlling my anger. Mm. I do it all the time. When I'm catcalled in the street, when incompetent men explain my own area of expertise to me, I do it pretty much every day because if I don't, I will get called emotional or difficult or might just literally get murdered. So I'm an expert at controlling my anger because I do it infinitely more than you. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure the Hulk's origin story, I think his father murdered his mom or something. I mean, deep trauma and tragedy. But She-Hulk, on the other hand, what makes her life really hard is being catcalled. I mean, serious trauma. See what I mean by contrived feminism? Force-fed down your throat? Not to mention throughout the entirety of the first episode, She-Hulk is just a natural at everything. You know, the painstaking decade or longer that the Hulk had to go through to manage his powers, the Hulk rage and transformations, while well, She-Hulk just figures it out in like a day, because she's just such an empowered whammon, and she's just so much better than the male counterpart. She just gets it automatically and is fully sentient during her Hulk transformation. The entire show just promotes this idea that the Hulk is a typical male goofball, and she's a very strong and empowered and much more intelligent, much more talented and capable whammon. It's so forced. I mean, we know Hulk's strength, But of course, in She-Hulk, the Hulk gets ran over by a Jeep Wrangler or whatever car it is. It's so insulting to my intelligence. It's just so forced and so cringe. And speaking of cringe, I don't even get the point. I don't even get the plot. Why is she a lawyer? What's even the point of this show? I'm a lawyer who's also a superhero and happens to just turn green while I'm in the middle of court. This is the final scene. Who the hell are you? Jennifer Walters, attorney at law. Just some random villain smashes through the wall, and then some super cringy scene with a weird looking punch and a smirk at the end? That was literally the ending scene. It came out of nowhere. She's just in court and then a random villain barges in through the wall like the Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah! And then she punches her into oblivion. Well that wraps it folks. No cliffhanger, no point, no plot, like I just don't get what I'm watching. The whole show is just like, oh yeah, She-Hulk, big biceps, strong empowered whammon, Hulk dumb, She-Hulk smart. It's objectively bad. It's not a hate campaign on IMDb that's downvoting or downrating the show because of whammon or BIPOC representation. It's cringe. The show sucks. And you know how I know it has nothing to do with ma misogyny or ma racism? Because just a week later, the new Game of Thrones show comes out called House of Dragon. And guess what? The pilot was awesome and got rave reviews and smashed records with over 10 million viewers on the initial launch. And the show, to a certain extent, does involve feminism and female empowerment. Except it's just not done in a cringe way. It's not the cringe feminism. It's done in good taste and it's interesting. The dynamic of a royal family that's struggling to produce a male heir, and then they're left with no choice but to announce the successor to the throne be the king's daughter because he doesn't have a son. That's interesting. It's compelling. It's interesting. It's dark. It's dramatic. And the most important word is contrived. It's not contrived. It's not forced. It's good storytelling. It's not a feminist narrative being shoved in your face. It's subtle and drawing on historical accuracies. It's a show with feminist tropes, a female main character, and almost a 9 out of 10 on IMDb. Instantly, Mark Ruffalo's ma racism and ma sexism grift falls apart spectacularly. But of course, this is what liberal elitists do. They use sensitive topics and perceived marginalized groups to collect points and avoid criticism. Your show sucks and your you're a grifter, and if the show doesn't get cancelled after one season, then that's what I call privilege. That would be almost as much of a fluke as Brian Stelter remaining on air for like eight years or whatever how long he was. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you're up for it. I'm gonna get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.